Um, first of all, thank you very much for uh, sponsoring our podcast, A Cup of Happy. Hopefully, it will help people feel happier. That's the idea. Um, it's wonderful to have you guys on board because you're so in line with what we're trying to do. You're obviously, you've been trying to make the world a better place for, I mean, years. Way longer than I could even imagine. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for being kind to people and the planet and making great products that smell delicious and um, make my skin feel very nice. So thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so um, I don't have anyone here to ask me the questions, but I'll just read them and then I'll tell you the answers. Okay, <laughs> right. I had been thinking about it for a while um, because of my travels. I, I've just finished, I like to say I've just finished, the world tour. And the world tour included every country on the planet. And I went around the world with my brother, Harry. Harry was filming it. Um, so he came with me to every charity that we visited, which was one in every country. And he recorded the collaborations in every country too. Um, and when we had those moments, those meetings with those people, um, there was so much to talk about, you know, there's so much to cover. Um, and we noticed that happiness levels were different in different places. And there sometimes felt like there was no rhyme nor reason for it. Um, you know, you would come across people that had just deep, deep, deep sadness in a place where you would think that it existed, you know. Um, but that was so rare in comparison to the other 182 places that you would think, you know, the charities, they take you to places where things are going wrong, really badly wrong, like, like more wrong than we can really fathom. Um, and the happiness levels were higher than they are here in England, in my opinion. Um, and I suppose you, one could say my opinion is, educated to a point because I've, I've seen it with my own eyes um but you know for happiness is fleeting isn't it so it's like I, I can say you know when we met them that day um although they may not have had any I don't know depending on which charity we're talking about uh maybe it was dance ability where they didn't have um most of them didn't have any limbs um yet they were still finding a way to dance every week and um, help each other with living um, accommodation and food and stuff and, um, and education and keeping people together. You know, the ringleader of that group um, had, no, had no legs and was born that way, you know, but he'd, he found a way to just rally the troops and be happy. And we mulled it over for a few weeks and then it was like obvious, of course, happiness. What an important, important subject to discuss. What an important subject to get your head around. And whatever information we gather, it is the most important thing that we share that information, that we encourage people to be happy because it, get, it allows them to live longer. And I mean, if, you, if you're not gonna focus on being happy, what are you gonna focus on? Guys. So that's why I made the podcast kind of um, short version. I could talk about that for about two days, <laughs> but yeah, that's that. Okay, next question. I am not, I suppose my travel and my experiences might give me a little bit more of a inkling and an insight into people's psyches maybe and how people's minds work. But as, me, as far as a singer, I'm just singing songs, right? So why does that make me, um, why does that give me the right to kind of tell people how to be happy, you know, not that that's what we're doing at all. But um, personally, I like to hear from psychologists. Um, um, we've, we've spoken to a, uh, what did she call it? It was not a therapist, it's a uh, life coach. That was um, really cool, talking to the life coach. We've spoken to a sex therapist, um, people that have different kind of methods and they've, they've studied things. You know, I think we're in a time where we want facts. 
we want data, we want proof, we want graphs. And I know certain things innately, I know, like logic would tell you, if you cry for, and I've done it, if you cry for a period of days consecutively and you have no smiles in those moments, if you're grieving or if you've had a breakup, which is actually grieving, but if you go through something like that for a, a long extended period of time, long, I say long, three days, if you go for it for a month, if you go for it for three days, you are going to get sick. That is a fact. You are going to get sick. I know I have. I've been through that experience and I think most people have been through that experience when they feel a physical reaction to their, uh, their mental space. Um, so there is proof, there is so much proof, there is so much data on how happiness and the lack thereof affects your health. So I don't have that data, so I'm just asking people. I want people to know it. I want people to have it. I want, I want to not be a useless waste of space on this planet. You know, my job, I consider my job as an entertainer, a singer, an emoter, um, a soul singer is, a, is somebody that is an emoter, I suppose. Um, my job is to help people feel good, uh, moved, um, to help them feel comforted in times of sadness. You know, that's, that's what music is. That's what music is. It is kind of the job of a therapist, but we're just not trained. <laughs> so I want to continue doing that job, even if I'm not singing. So this is kind of my way of doing it. Getting people on the podcast that know really what they're talking about and they have the answer as to why they've come up with those theories. La la la. How important is happiness to your productivity as an artist? Do you need to be happy all the time or do you need both light and shade in life? to write and record some of your best music. Okay, um, there are a lot of musicians and I have worked, most of the people I've worked with um, have this belief where you need a little rub, you need a little drama, you need a little sadness to make music, to make good music. I don't think you do need that. I think we've all, first of all, we've all had that. And I think to assume that there is a person on this planet that hasn't felt that. I just think that is insanity. Of course, everybody has. So we can pull on those things. Um, we don't have to deliberately put ourselves into a sad space um, to make an album. And I know artists that do because they believe that if they don't, they're not gonna make good art. First of all, it's just not true. It's just not true. Ah, uh, and um, second of all, it makes them very, very poorly. And I don't want that for anyone. So I wouldn't say that as a musician, an artist, a writer, whatever you want to call me. I would never say that to anyone. I think that um, happiness is important to your, to your main focus in life. You're not gonna get it every day. And if you had it every day, then maybe you wouldn't really notice it was there when it was. Um, but of course it's important. It's important to, to want it. It's important to try, to try and have it. Even if you don't manage it today. God, me today, I've been the worst today. I've been right moody. <laughs> I really have. But sometimes you just have to decide. And I find that if you pretend long enough, it can become real. And you know, your brain starts going, oh, I'm, am I happy? Well, I'm smiling, so I must be. And then it kind of, it starts to fix your body. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, so yes, happiness is important to music, um, but sadness is and indifference is and boredom is, and lust is, and uh, greed is, and guilt is. Every emotion that you can possibly imagine, put it on the table and don't take it off. Because if you take one of them off or just, you know, just focus on one, you're not, you're not gonna make honest work. 
I think good work is honest work. So if you're truly, truly feeling in love, you should really just do that in the song that you're making, in the words, in the melodies, in the harmonies. I think the point of music is, it is a communication tool and it helps people to feel comforted and connected. So if they are feeling down and depressed or angry and they hear a song that's down, depressed and angry, it's gonna help them to know they're not on their own, which essentially could make them feel happy because they're not on their own. And there's so much comfort in that. So we need all of it. We need all the emotions. Okay. To what degree is your happiness dependent on the happiness of other people? Massively. Um, massively. Um, okay. That to me is everything actually, I think. But they do say, someone said once, it was one of the charities I visited um, on the world tour. Um, it was an animal charity in Barbados. Um, this wonderful woman, Cornelia, she was running this um, dog sanctuary. And it was really just a beautiful, she'd done a beautiful job, but she was so poorly. Her legs were hurting, her back was hurting. She was clearly deteriorating. Um, she was very, very unwell and her husband was watching her just work herself into the ground. But anyway, why was I telling you this story? I was telling you this story because, that was it, her husband said, I was trying to explain to Cornelia, honey, you need to look after your health, otherwise you can't help anyone. And he said, you know, a sick nurse is no good to anyone. You can't heal anyone. You can't fix anyone. You can't help anyone feel good. And it, he's totally right. She needed to go nurture herself in order to be a productive, proactive person. Um, and she wanted someone to take over. So we helped her find someone to take over. Um, it all worked out in the end. Someone has taken over and she's now gone and she's looking after herself, which is great. But, um, so we do, we do things like that. So I created a foundation. Um, it's called the Joss Stone Foundation. It's not very, um, um, imaginative. I couldn't come up with a name. So that's it. Joss Stone Foundation. And I created it for moments like that. Um, so when a charity is doing work, they're trying to help themselves, they're trying to get donations, but they might not be set up to get donations. Or they might be so overwhelmed, they just don't know what really to do. And it's hard to see the wood through the trees. So I guess my point is, is that if we look after ourselves, if we put ourselves into a good position, eat healthy food, do your affirmations every morning, have a good mantra, um, you know, be positive, try because then you might be able to help someone else feel positive. And then you might be able to actually fix a real problem like education in, or the opportunity for education to be taken in a refugee camp. That's actually possible. That's very possible. So yeah, that's why I made the foundation is to help just in little ways, wherever I can really. And it's been good. Happiness for health is everything. You can be as healthy as you like. You can run a million miles, you can eat all the healthy food, you can drink all the juices, um, you can not smoke, you can not drink, you can do all of that. But if you are, if you're suffering mentally, and I do think if you do all those things, you're much less likely to suffer mentally, like much less. Um, but if you are still suffering um, mentally, and or you're doing all those right things, then you won't be healthy. You won't, you won't, it won't work. You're gonna be tired and it's not gonna work out. Um, and at that point, you do have to go to the doctor. Yeah, for my, my well-being, I try and love and put myself around love as much as possible. Love, 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 love. That's my well-being. Um, I think I'm pretty healthy as far as food and drink goes. Um, I do like to exercise just a little bit. I don't exercise a lot. I might go for a run like once a week, twice a week, something like that. Just a bit. Just nice to remind yourself your body works. Um, but love, I think, for me is, is the thing that helps me be healthy. Um, to love and be loved. I mean, I don't mean be loved by the masses. I mean love, you know, with your 
mum and your boyfriend and your brother and your best friend um, and my dogs, like my immediate. That's the love that keeps me healthy and happy because that's real. These people love you even if you're flawed. Um, that's love. Do you have a daily mantra you live by? I don't have a daily mantra, but I do have a few sayings. Um, my dad taught me this um, choice. He believes you have three choices. One, and it's not in this order, it's in whatever order that you think works. Put up and shut up, change it or get out. Those are your three. And sometimes you might go with number one, sometimes you might go with number two, sometimes you might go with number three. But it's nice to know, it's comforting to know that you always, always have choice. And I think I have known that since I was a little girl. And it's helped me feel free. It's, it's a really, really good thing that I have in the back of my mind always. If ever I feel uncomfortable, scared, sad or whatever, I know I have choice. I think. So, come on. This is, my t this is my cat Tinkerbell. When I'm feeling really sad, I often just, I do a uh, life check. <laughs> I might just take a deep breath, look in the mirror, say, okay, are you still breathing? Okay, then you're good. Then we can move forward. <laughs> oh dear. How important is natural green beauty to you? It's very important. Um, I think I think beauty comes in lots of different ways, um, and it's not always visual. Um, I think things that are natural are always better every time. They always are. I just prefer them. I don't know, I think I'm more I just like I just like natural things. I think it just it always smells better, tastes better, feels better. Doesn't give you, if you're talking about skin creams, it doesn't give you a rash or um, or make you feel like you've got spicy skin that needs to come off, you know. It's, um, it's nature. Um, and we are nature. So why wouldn't it feel better? It just does. So, yeah, I mean, it's important. It's important to kind of always go where it's warm. Go where you feel good. Go where it's natural to go. Um, so, yeah, I think that's important to most of my choices, really. So if you can make a choice as far as, like, your skincare, um, your bubble bath, um, you know, what soap you use, and we all use these things, um, why not choose the one that's not going to hurt you? Kind of makes sense, really. What's the first Willida product you used and what are your current Willida favourites? Which Willida product would be your desert island must-have? Oh, well, hmm, desert island. Probably, probably just the, um, the cleanser. It's nice. I like the smell of it. But uh, my favourite, that's hard to say. The skin food lip smush lip balm I love is I also love that the oil to take off my makeup love that I'm all about oil to take your makeup off with um it's nice and it smells good it's just it's just great and then there's that milky stuff that I put in my bath just the other night I love that as well honestly I love it all it's great but lip balm for me is a biggie maybe that would be my desert island thing skin food yeah lip balm I don't know if I, well, of course I could live without it, but I wouldn't like to. I like, I like a bit of lip balm. The fragrance, mmm, lavender. That kind of makes you go, ah, yes. Um, I just love the rose. I think I'm just obsessed with the rose um, flavor that you guys have. I do love that. I think it's just kind of, whew. But I'm obsessed with that in everything. I'm obsessed with that in food. I love like to make like rose cupcakes and have rose gin and tonic and i've actually got some turkish delight rose flavor in the fridge i just love rose so 
you know, that boosts my mood just because I enjoy it. Um, but yeah, I wonder if there's like, there's got to be a reason why. I don't know why. I just personally really like it. But in life, you know, I love a lemongrass. I do love a lavender. Um, I love jasmine. Oh my God, I just lit a jasmine joss stick in there. Oh, so nice. Yeah, so yeah. Anyway, I think that's the end of the question. We'll leave down. We'll leave down. We'll leave down. We'll leave down.